The Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, is raising eyebrows as their National Welfare Officer, John Kekocha, questions why the NMPC is selling petrol from Dangote Refinery at a higher price than imported fuel. Stick around to see what other intriguing stories are making the headlines. Hi, welcome to What's Happening, where we bring you the latest news from around the world. I am Frances Oti, and these are our top 10 stories countdown today. At number 10, old tweets from Ryan Wesley Ralph, the suspect in the recent assassination attempt on Donald Trump, have come to light following his arrest. Ralph fired shots near Trump's golf course in West Palm Beach on Sunday, but Trump was unharmed thanks to the swift action of the Secret Service. In a 2020 tweet, Ralph had expressed deep dissatisfaction with Trump, calling for his removal. As the investigation continues, it is clear that some people's frustrations can escalate dangerously. Meanwhile, at number nine in a classic Trump outburst, the former U.S. president declared his hatred for pop icon Taylor Swift after she endorsed Kamala Harris, causing a stir online. While Swift's barking brought a rush of traffic to a voter registration site, a new poll shows her influence had little effect on voters, with 81% saying it made no difference. Among young women, only 8% said they were more likely to vote for Harris, highlighting the endorsement's limited impact. Looks like Swift's star power couldn't sway the political crowd, and Trump didn't miss the chance to make it personal. At number 8, the United Arab Emirates, UAE, just shipped in a whopping 50 tons of humanitarian aid to Nigeria, helping flood victims recover from recent devastation. The UAE's ambassador, Salem Al Shamsi, confirms the relief package launched by President Sheikh Mohammed Al Nayan as a sign of the commitment to disaster hit nations. Top Nigerian officials from NIMA and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs were there to receive the much needed goods. Looks like strong diplomatic ties are paying off, with a flood of kindness coming in just when it's needed the most. At number 7, the Chief of Defence Staff, General Christopher Musa, has ordered a swift investigation into the alleged six-year wrongful detention of a Nigerian naval rating, Seaman Abbas Haruna. Brigadier General Tukuru Guzal Monday confirmed the probe, assuring Nigerians that justice and fairness will be upheld through a transparent military review. The military court-martial process, he emphasized, follows strict procedures to ensure fairness for all involved. At number six, in a major crackdown, Nigerian army troops arrested nine suspected oil thieves and seized seven vehicles, four trucks, eight motorcycles, and over 221,000 liters of stolen products. The operation, part of a broader effort by the 6th Division to disrupt illegal refining in the Niger Delta, also saw the destruction of 37 refining sites and several wooden boats used for smuggling. Troops scored big wins in River State, confiscating thousands of liters of stolen crude and refining equipment. At number five, relief materials meant for internally displaced persons, IDPs, in Benue's Kwande Ushongo constituency were reportedly seized on orders from Governor Hyacinth Alia. The supplies requested by Honorable Tisia Ubo and provided by the National Emergency Management Agency, NIMA, were halted while being offloaded, with claims they had to be moved to the government house. Despite efforts to clarify that the goods were meant for IDPs, the standoff continued, delaying critical aid to those in need. At number four, the Minister of Interior, Olubomi Tunji Ojo, just laid it down at the National Day of Identity event, saying the government can't protect or provide for people it doesn't know. He stressed that proper identification or evidence of identity is the foundation for national development and essential services. Without managing identity, it's tough to separate the good from the bad and deliver basic services like policing. Bottom line, 
If Nigeria doesn't get identity management right, it risks remaining a country of potential without real progress. At number three, the University of Port Harcourt has shut down rumors of a deadly intergang clash on campus. In a statement, spokesman Dr. Sam Wenu clarified that the incident was merely a student fight with no death or injuries, and the university acted quickly to handle it. The students involved have been detained by police, and Uniports emphasized its zero-tolerance stance on cultism and violence. At number two, in a bold statement, Minister of State for Youth Development Ayodele Olawande has praised President Bola Tinubu as a wealthy leader who has no interest in looting Nigeria's resources. Speaking at an event in Abuja, Olawande urged Nigerians to be patient, promising that the administration will soon bring positive changes. He assured that Tinubu's affluence means he's not driven by greed and emphasized ongoing efforts to transform the country. Sounds like a hopeful pitch. Let's hope the changes come as quickly as the promises. Finally, at number one, the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN's National Welfare Officer John Kekocha, has questioned why NNPC is selling petrol from Dangote Refinery at a higher price than imported fuel, calling it nonsensical. Speaking on Channel's television, he wondered why Nigerians should celebrate the refinery if the product costs more locally. NNPC started selling Dangote petrol at 898 naira per liter, leading to prices of up to 1,090 naira per liter in some states. Honestly, it's mind-boggling. Shouldn't local production mean cheaper fuel? Well, that's all for today. You can get the full stories on our website and follow us on all our social media handles to join the conversation. See you next time on What's Happening.